So, I'm five years old, and I discover a new superhero. Aquaman breathes underwater, communicates telepathically with fish, and best of all, he is friends with dolphins. <laughs> this is so amazing that I decide to become Aquaman. Only not exactly. The superhero I become has dark, wavy hair, gets to eat spaghetti and meatballs for dinner every night, and has a different name. I go running into the kitchen. Mommy, mommy, I'm Seaman. <laughs> Don't ever say that again. <laughs> what? No, I'm I'm semen. Oh, honey. I need at least 15 years before we have this conversation. <laughs> so mom is being weird. <laughs> and apparently she's a drag queen. <laughs> But that night, I lie in bed, and I close my eyes as tight as I can. And I concentrate as hard as I have ever concentrated. I send my thoughts telepathically to all my dolphin friends, Coral, and Seafoam, and Tidal Wave, and Dennis. I say, guys, guys, we're going to Jones Beach tomorrow. Why don't you meet me there? It will be so fun. I mean, we can swim and play tag and hide and seek. And maybe, maybe, I could ride one of you for a little bit. <laughs> what do you say? And I absolutely 100% know that my telepathy worked because my dolphin friends answer me. <laughs> yes, yes, we'd love to play with you. We can't wait, hurry, come soon. So the next morning I go to Jones Beach with my family. I get out of the car, I breathe in that briny air. I feel a bit of the spray and the breeze and the warm sun on my shoulders. I run to the water and there are seashells and sandpipers and beach glass and driftwood and so many amazing, amazing things. But there are no dolphins. I wade into the water looking for them. I cut my foot on a razor clam. Bummer. So this is way before dolphins attained celebrity status. In the 70s and 80s, thousands of dolphins drown in tuna nets and hardly anyone gives a shit. But to me, these creatures are pure magic. And that magic grows as I learn about them. In high school biology, I learned that dolphins are only ever half asleep. The right side of their brain slumbers, but the left side stays awake to watch for predators and to remind them to swim to the surface and take a breath. After a while, bloop, the sides switch. The left side goes to sleep and the right side stands guard. I'm sorry, that is so cool. I never stop being semen. <laughs> and I never lose my fantasy of swimming with dolphins, not for one second. In my 20s, I fall in love with this wonderful man named Scott. We decide to vacation on the big island of Hawaii. One of the hotels there has a dolphin program. <laughs> dolphin program. <laughs> Basically, you get to pay a bunch of money and hang out with Flipper. Which you can do, like, in Tijuana now, but at that time, only a few places in the world do it. And the program is so popular, they have a lottery every day. Sometimes more than 100 people sign up, but only 10 get picked. You put your name in the bowl in the morning, and when you have to be there at noon when they do the drawing, or your spot goes to someone else. This is not an opportunity Seaman is willing to pass up. <laughs> My wonderful boyfriend, Scott, is not so sure. I mean, he's not, like, against dolphins or anything, but he often sees things a lot more clearly than I do. Which sucks. <laughs> but he indulges me. 
In the morning after we arrive in Hawaii, Scott and I go sign up. Man. The pathway to the dolphin habitat is paved with these mossy stones. Huge tumbles of lava rock are on either side, and sprouting out of the rock are these strange, gorgeous plants with these waxy blooms that look like they might have come from the planet Mars. The air is balmy and sweet with the smell of plumeria. The sign-up is in a small office right next to the dolphins, and there's a waterfall, a frickin' waterfall, <laughs> spilling right into the dolphin habitat. Bamboo arches gracefully over the water. There are palm trees everywhere. Every bit of it is stunningly beautiful. And every bit of it is fake. <laughs> well, don't get me wrong. The blooms, the bamboo, the palm trees, that's real stuff, but it's all arranged in a certain way. It's all presented in a certain way. The dolphin habitat is a fraud. Even the name, it's not a habitat, it's a pool. Now, Seaman knows at a glance <laughs> that the dolphins in that pool are Atlantic dolphins. Now think about that. I'm on an island in the middle of the Pacific, and the dolphins in this program come from a whole different ocean. I asked Tiffany, the suntan blonde woman behind the counter, about this. Tiffany is very perky. <laughs> we use Atlantic dolphins in our program because they thrive in captivity. <laughs> I'm not sure I agree. The dolphin pool is gated, so I can see, but can't get close. All the animals are clustered together as far from people as they can possibly get. One keeps slapping the surface of the water with its tail fin over and over in a way that seems compulsive and unwholesome. The dorsal fins just kind of flop to the side. The water is murky and brownish. My boyfriend Scott asks, why is the water so dirty? <laughs> It's hard to keep the water sparkling when you have dolphins in captivity. Scott mutters, then maybe you shouldn't have dolphins in captivity? <laughs> I elbow Scott in the ribs. Because, okay, I get it. The dolphins don't seem happy. In fact, they're kind of prisoners. If they interact with me, it will only be because they'll get a reward at the end. It's... It's dolphin prostitution. And if I do this, I will be a dolphin John. <laughs> but more than that, I'll be supporting a money-making venture that exploits these animals that I love. But, but, I want to swim with a dolphin so fucking bad! <laughs> and in the secret chamber of my heart, I believe that I'm special. As soon as I'm in the water, those dolphins are going to recognize my specialness, and we are going to play tag and hide and seek, and one of them's going to give me a ride. No kidding. A little sliver of me actually believes this. So I put my name in the bowl and figure I'll wrestle with the ethics if I get drawn. We decide to spend the rest of the d morning at Keala Kikua Bay. There's this hilarious sign on the trail leading down to the beach that says, Shark Repellent Recommended for All Swimmers. <laughs> Scott blows by it like nothing. Holy shit, Scott, did you just see that sign? <laughs> it's a joke, it's fine. <laughs> Why would you think that's a joke? Because there's no such thing as shark repellent? What would that even be? I don't know, Tabasco sauce? <laughs> We get to the beach, and Scott decides to hang out on the shore. But that water calls to me. Turquoise blue, with the sun glinting off it. And people in the water are hooting and hollering and having more fun than is legal in the state of Utah. <laughs> I put on my mask and snorkel, and jump in, and as soon as I put my face in the water, I see a huma huma nuku nuku apu a'a. 
<laughs> which is the Hawaii state fish. <laughs> Seaman knows these things. It also happens to be gorgeous. It's black and tan and white with little bits of electric blue and it kind of looks like it's wearing a Lone Ranger mask. I swim out to a little reef and life is festooned everywhere. There's elkhorn coral, brain coral, fire coral, all kinds of coral. And there are these tiny little shrimp hanging out in little nooks and under rocks. There are gorgeous fish with black bodies that are trimmed in yellow. And there are mini schools of little blue fish hanging out like shifting clouds over the reef. It, it's all so beautiful, it's overwhelming. And yet all I can think is more. And I don't even know exactly what I mean by more. Um, I guess it's not so much that this fish is beautiful or that fish is beautiful. It's that the ocean itself is beautiful. I'm floating in this great engine that is churning with life, life, and more life. And I want to swallow it. I want to wrap my arms around it. And since I can't do either of those things, I want to be out in the fucking middle of it. I want to be right in the middle. So I turn away from the reef and away from the shore, and I start to swim across the bay, a distance of a little more than a mile. I still have my mask and snorkel, so I can see rays passing under me, an ocean-going trigger fish, an albatross skims just above the surface of the water, and out here, the ocean is deeper, so it's not turquoise anymore. It's sapphire blue, and the sun passing through the water makes a shifting web of light that is everywhere, all around me. And by now, I've been swimming for a while, and I realize that if I'm gonna make it back to the hotel with the dolphin program by noon, I need to turn around. And I decide, fuck that dolphin prison camp. <laughs> this is better, this is better. And I realize something else too. If you are out in the middle of Keala Kekua Bay on a gorgeous day all by yourself and you are wearing a bathing suit, you are overdressed. <laughs> so I take off my bathing suit and I put it around my neck. <laughs> now as I swim in that gorgeous warm water, it caresses every single part of me and I just can't help it. I can get a big old boner. <laughs> and as I swim, I think, I'm kind of fucking the ocean. <laughs> and I don't mean to brag, but the ocean is digging it. <laughs> but here's the truth. It is bliss. It is pure bliss. Then, I look through the water, and in the distance, I see a silhouette of a fish with the dorsal fin sticking straight up out of its back. There's no question in my mind what it is. <laughs> Fucking A. The sign wasn't kidding, and I have no shark repellent. <laughs> so I do the only thing I can think of. I put my bathing suit back on. <laughs> but hey, it's a big ocean. There was plenty of room. The shark's going about her business. I'm going about mine. I'm cool, she's cool, everybody's cool. <laughs> I swim a little bit further and, holy shit, the silhouette of another shark. But they're really far away. I mean, they're right on the edge of where I can see them. I don't know, maybe sharks are nearsighted. Maybe they can't see me at all. I swim maybe one more stroke and I see the silhouette of another shark. And another, and another, and another. Eventually, I count 11 sharks 
My balls drop so tight, I swear to God, I'm feeling in the back of my throat. Even in that warm water, every bit of me breaks out in goose flesh. And then they start swimming toward me. This is such a fucking bummer. I mean, here I am having so much fun on this beautiful day, swimming in this gorgeous water, and I have this oceanic boner. And now I'm gonna be eaten? I mean, it really looks that way because I'm really far from shore. There's no one anywhere near me. I'm, I'm doomed. I stop swimming, I look through the water, and I wait to die, I guess. There comes this moment when the sharks stop being silhouettes. They resolve into these powerful creatures barreling toward me, and I realize they aren't sharks. Dolphins. <laughs> And I'm semen, so I know that these are, these are Pacific white-sided dolphins, and they are in their home. I am their guest. They swirl around under, and underneath me, and they play, and they dance, and they sing. Oh man, the whole ocean is alive with chirps and whistles and clicks. And I don't mean to talk out of school, but two of them are fucking like crazy while they swim. <laughs> And every once in a while, a third one kind of drops down to check them out, like, hey, how's everybody doing? Anybody need a hand? <laughs> These dolphins, it could be anywhere in the whole wide world, in the whole wide beautiful ocean. And for a little while, they choose to hang out with me. I don't know how long they stay, it feels like five seconds, and it feels like half my life, both at the same time. Then they leave. Because they want to. I wave goodbye. And for a while I float. Just float. What happened wasn't arranged. It wasn't presented. It wasn't fake in any way. It was real. Mighty real. And real is enough. Real is better. Thank you.